Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, January 7th. We are still processing what happened at the Golden Globes last <laughs> night. And I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we are joined here in the studio by our wonderful friend, Eric King. Hi everybody. And we have a very special guest with us today. Yes, we have Mamie Paris here from School of Rock. Yes, yes. we love Mamie. She's so lovely, so wonderful. We are going to talk to her in a little bit. But first, let's talk about today's top five. You know, we are still processing, but <laughs> Broadway alums were snatching up trophies last yes. night. They sure were. Mm -hmm. So as Ryan said, the Golden Globes were last night mm -hmm. and had a lot of great winners from the theater yes. community, uh, starting with Darren Chris, whom we all love from Glee. Emmy Award winner. Emmy Darren. Award winner. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now. Of, and famous for, for or musical theater circles Absolutely. for Glee and Hedvig yep. and How to Succeed. He won a Golden Globe last night for the assassination of Gianni well Versace. Well deserved. Very American well deserved. Kind of story. Mm -hmm. um, also, Glenn Close theater legend, uh, took home a Golden Globe for the wife. She also gave the best speech of the oh night, my God. I'll say right Amazing. here. It was so She's lovely. So smart. She's so incredible. Oh, love it. Uh, Patricia Clarkson, the Tony nominee for yes. The Elephant Man, won for Sharp Objects. So good. Yes. yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Ben Wishaw, a Tony nominee for The Crucible, won for A Very English Scandal. Yeah, and he, you can also see him in Mary Poppins Returns. You sure can. Of yes. course, he's so charming. Super talented. And Rachel Brosnahan, whom we all love from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, yes. one for the second year in the in a row. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was just announced she's going to be hosting SNL. Yes, she's SNL. The first that is so host. exciting. Love Rachel Brosnan. Indeed. And was Ben mm -hmm. Wishaw the only one from Mary Poppins to, or, well, he wasn't nominated for Mary Poppins, <laughs> for but... Yeah, but it yeah. didn't win yes. any awards. It didn't win any yeah, awards. No, yeah, very it was a very sad. competitive evening. Uh, but the Oscar yeah. nominations haven't come out yet, that of course. True. So hopefully that is true. Mary Poppins returns. A couple we'll weeks. Count them up in there. Indeed. And um, unfortunately, we have some sad news about a very memorable leading man. Yeah, so I don't mean to bring it all down the, the moment for a moment, but Derek Keeling, who we all loved, he made his Broadway debut in Greece, of course. He was part of You're the One That I Want, the TV show. He uh, passed away on December 12th. Um, he was a native of West Virginia. Uh, he went to the University of Kentucky. He graduated there with honors. Um, in addition to making his Broadway debut in Greece, uh, he was Wholesome Danny on You're the One That I Want. And he uh, made his Broadway debut alongside Ashley Spencer as Sandy um, from the program as well. He also starred as Johnny Cash. He was an incredible Johnny Cash in the tour of Million Dollar Quartet. Yeah. Such a fantastic oh, wow. show. Um, he also played Chad and All Shook Up regionally. Um, he played the Fonz in Happy Days. He also was Charles Darnay in the pre-Broadway run of A Tale of Two Cities. Um, they are going to have a celebration of life for him in his home state of West Virginia and in lieu of flowers and um, cards, they are asking for donations that will go to the University of Kentucky's musical theater program. So sad, our thoughts and prayers are of course with Derek's family and we will remember him so fondly. So sad to lose a member of the community. And a new musical comedy has best just been announced for Off-Broadway. Yeah, so we just found out that the new musical comedy Chick Flick... Chick is, Flick? Chick Flick. <laughs> I'm already it? sold. Indeed. Bridesmaids? <laughs> <laughs> ...is going to go into the West Side Theater, Off-Broadway, uh, starting on February 21st. So this is a show that is written by Susie Kahn, directed by David Rutera, and choreographed by Sarah O'Glebe. Mm. Um, so this is what Chick Flick Tell the Musical me what it's is about. about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Chick Flick the Musical invites audiences to join Karen, Dawn, Sheila, and Meg as they get together to unwind, watch a Chick Flick, and play their favorite drinking game. This is my every weekend. <laughs> yes, definitely. man. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this show is going to officially open on March 7th for a limited run through June 29th. Casting is to come. I'm sold. I will be there. How do we get ourselves in the <laughs> show? Say, Seriously. Wait, yes, I can do it. <laughs> and this book turned movie turned play is ending. Train Spotting Live, which was such a fascinating, immersive production. If you yeah. are a fan of the Irvine Welsh uh, book or Danny Boyle's movie, um, this uh, began previews on July 5th at the Roy Arias stages, opened on July 15th. Um, it will, at the time of its closing, it will have played 10 previews and 135 regular wow. performances. It will close, sadly, on January 19th. So you have a little bit longer to go see it if you haven't yet. Um, of course, the show is set across. Um, 
like 80s dance music. It follows a group of friends that struggle through the Edinburgh uh, heroin epidemic. Um, fascinating play, fascinating book, movie. You should check all of them out if you haven't yet. Um, really cool production. If you have the chance, go see it before it closes. There you go. And this Broadway.com vlogger announcement has us going bananas. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Well done. Yes. I'm very excited so, about uh, this. We announced today that Christiane Pitts, who is yes. the leading lady of King Kong, is going to lead our next vlog. Yes. The vlog is called Queen of New York, mm -hmm. which is the name of her breakthrough amazing song. A like moment. Her I Want Song. It's her moment. It's so <laughs> wonderful. Uh, Christiane's vlog will kick off this Thursday, mm -hmm. January 10th, and will appear on the site for eight weeks on every Thursday. Absolutely. So I cannot she's, wait. She's one of this site's, uh, one of our top five favorite performances yes. of 2018. She's absolutely incredible she's in the show. so talented. She's Star. I can't wait to see what goes on backstage Absolutely. at King Kong. Very excited. Yeah, All man. right. Andy, yes. thank you so much, sir. My pleasure, So wonderful Ryan. doing the news with yes. you. Eric, why don't you tell us about today's very special guest? I'd love to. Mamie Paris is currently starring in School of Rock as Principal Rosalie Mullins. She has previously appeared on Broadway in Cats, Ragtime, On the 20th Century, 110 in the Shade, and The Drowsy Chaperone. She's been seen in theaters across the country on national tours of Wicked, Legally Blonde, 9 to 5, and on screen in A Stand-Up Guy, The Blacklist, and State of Affairs. Follow her on social media at Mamie Paris, and leave all your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Ryan and Mamie. Hello, Mamie. Hi. You look so wonderful. Thank you. you. Look, so do you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. We're so excited to chat with you. Well, yay. School of Rock is, of course, one of Broadway.com's very favorite shows. We absolutely love the show. We are sad to be seeing it go. January 20th is when the I show know, will be closing. So of soon. course. I know. Yeah. I know. So make sure you go see it on Broadway. <laughs> of course, there is also a national tour. Yeah. Um, which School is of great. Rock is not going anywhere um not for a long long not time for a very long time <laughs> um tell me how how are things at the winter garden with your your cast and crew right things now? are great i mean you know it's it's always rough when something's ending luckily sure. you know it's become such a great trend these days to have so much notice before you close a show like this so i think everybody's very prepared and and we're just kind of all starting the the packing process you mm -hmm. know you move into a theater and you nest and nest i've got my invisible <laughs> liners in you nest and then you have to um, denestify. That's right. a that's a wicked term. See, I, I, I brought I, it with me. <laughs> um, so we're you know boxing things up, and, of but it's it's good. The morale is high, and and we're just so stoked. We have such great audiences, and, I, and yeah, the absolutely. house is full every night, and we're living for it. It's great. Right, and you had the wonderful opportunity to open the show, and now you're part of the closing yeah. family as well. What what memory, what experience will you take away with you that w you will hold most <sighs> fondly? I mean everything. It was really cool to be able to open the show as one character as Pat and then come back as another character as Rosalie. It's kind mm -hmm. of an actor's dream. So sure, you kind of get yeah. to see the show from both sides. And I mean, I think it, it was really, really cool to return to the building having been away for... 18 months or something mm -hmm. and and it still kind of felt like home there were so many friendly faces and the building was just as i remembered it and it's, it's yeah. been kind of cool to be back i think but mm -hmm. you know opening the show was always a great memory i it's I've, I've had such a great opportunity to work with so many people and working with andrew lloyd weber and of working course, with that yeah. team so it's i've had a lot of great memories yeah, yeah. and the just the kids in this show <laughs> from I mean from the very beginning are just some of the most they make me feel like I wasted my oh, yeah, childhood oh yeah what are we doing with our lives <laughs> right, you why know? don't you play 18 exactly. instruments like, Ryan it's absolutely you have no excuse it's I know mind blowing I know what 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 has it been like to work with these these dynamos it's and just... been amazing I mean from from our very first weeks in rehearsal with these kids who were so on their game and just I you know came to really knock it out of the park and to the kids we have now and all the kids yeah. in between. I mean, everybody, it's its amazing, the talent that's out there that they were able to find. And it's been a really cool experience to be an adult in that building. Because right. I've worked with kids before, but working with 17 kids in a building... Yeah as an adult actor, really keeps you in check and not just keeps you from doing things that are like not PG rated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it also kind of, it's, it's cool how it reminds you, you know, it can be so easy when you do this for a living. And obviously mm -hmm. I love what I do and I, and I work really hard to stay in this business and do this. And 
but you know, it after a while you, you look forward to your paycheck and sure, you come to work course. and it's the same thing and mm-hmm. you try to do your best every day. And being in the theater with these, you know, ten year olds, twelve year olds yeah. who every day are just so excited to be there reminds you how truly special it is that we get to do this every day. Certainly. Yeah. And for children in the audience or kids in the audience to look up and see kids doing that. Oh, it's like so and cool. I mean what that must be so incredible to it's that so, energy so cool. must feel so different yeah. as well. What's really cool is, you know, we have like like all Broadway theaters, we have great merch that's tied into the show. <laughs> and you we sell drumsticks and when they're there, they sell out like this, but we have these little ukuleles that are School of mm. Rock branded that we sell and they fly off the shelves and kids will have them sign them at the stage door and their parents will be like, Well, I guess we're starting guitar lessons like they get so turned on to performing or to playing an instrument and that is I think that's the whole I mean I think that was one of the reasons Andrew Lloyd Webber wanted to tackle this piece you know because he brought with him this whole the grant of of music in schools and Mm -hmm. making the licensing available and is to inspire these kids to to look at music as as something that will propel them forward as an adult, whether as a career or just in life, to add that touch of creativity. I think it's right. really cool. Absolutely. When you were younger, did you have a teacher or someone that you looked up to that inspired you to oh, get involved? Absolutely. With? I mean, plenty of teachers. You mm-hmm. know, I I was really inspired early on in life. I, I was born in Texas, and there's a wonderful theater in, in Dallas called Casa Manana, and they used to do these kids shows. And I remember going as a kid and watching these children's theater, and and it was such an eye-opening experience to me. And then down the line, I had you know a, a teacher I still keep in touch with, Ron Meyer, who really introduced me to what acting was. Yeah. And then my high school theater teacher, Melody Connor, who really gave us the resources and made sure we had like the Sunday Times every week to read about what was going on on Broadway. And I, it's so cool how how one person can create that kind of inspiration for mm-hmm. kids, you know. Absolutely. I hope I get to be a part of it. I'm I hope sh- you get I'm to be sure, a part of it. No, you of know? course. And I'm sure you do. I'm sure there are children <laughs> in that audience that say, I want to be like her when Aww. I grow up. Absolutely. Speaking of Andrew Lloyd Webber, who, I mean, goes without saying, but you have <laughs> had the opportunity, not only with this show, but of course, Grizabella. Oh, what, yeah. What, what was your experience like auditioning or preparing to play that role just such a iconic role in musical theater with you know it's I feel like with a role that iconic and it's something I've kind of had to evolve into as a performer um, with a role that well known and and that we've all seen so Mm -hmm. much you kind of have to throw your conceptions of it out the window. Sure. You really kind of have to toss it because, you know, I'm not going to be what these other women were. I'm not going to be Elaine Page, and I'm not going to be Betty Buckley. As much as I admire and, and mm. appreciate everything these women did, I'm going to be Mamie Paris. something very different to it, yeah. So I approached it that way. You know, how would I, how do I see this character, and in what way do I identify with, with this character? And it kind of, once you find that for yourself it gives you a kind of freedom mm. that you wouldn't have otherwise you know and I, I feel like that's something I've learned throughout my career leading up to that moment you know I could only have found Grizabella that way having done everything I'd done in my career leading up to that, having understudied as much as I had because when you're an understudy chances are you're not perfectly right for the role but you have to bring what you right. have to the role to make it work point, as yeah. best as you can so with Grizabella, it was let me bring what I feel, what I believe her to be to this role. And I was given such a terrific amount of freedom in that respect to create something new. And I, I, I really walked away feeling like I had. I was Certainly. really I, it was thrilling to do every night. Absolutely. And what is your relationship <laughs> with Andrew Lloyd Webber now? What when you see each other, do you think, hey Andy? Oh, Jeez. we <laughs> hug, kiss, kiss, we go to brunch. No, I don't I mean, you know, no matter how much you work with somebody, because we've worked together so much now. Right, I mean yeah. doing School of Rock, I mean, the man heard me sing everything under the sun as we mm-hmm. developed this this musical, which is probably how I wound up in cats. Certainly. But um so he knows my voice very, very well, and I, that's just an incredible thing to, to know and to say, <laughs> um, because we all know his yeah, work quite well. Absolutely. So, I, yeah, I, I think he's just terrific to work with. It was really such an honor and a privilege to watch him work and to watch him create. You know, at one point we were creating kind of a, a reprise moment in School of Rock, and he was like, come with me, come with me, and we just went down to the band room, to the pit, mm. 
and said, well, what if we did this? And he said, well, what if we tried this? And if you hit it on the three, and the, hit it on the three, and the, what if we, and to watch him create this piece, and okay, sing it again, and now start at measure four, and, and to be a part of that yeah. was something I'll never forget. So, uh, but I, I really enjoyed every second, you know, we've, we got to share some fun moments. So Absolutely. I look forward to the next one. Um, <laughs> us too. And w before Andy left, uh, we were talking about, um, you did Dave this past yeah. summer down oh my in God. D.C. Yeah, so cool. And he saw it. He Andy saw, saw it, and he absolutely so cool. loved it. He came back to the office. <laughs> <laughs> raving about it. Where um, where does the future of that show stand right now? That's a good you? question. I don't know. I mean, you know, always there's talk with those things, and it's mm -hmm. it's in terrific, terrific shape. I mean, honestly, to have done the first fully staged production of it, it was in such incredible shape. I really feel like it was ready to move. Yeah. Um, so nothing official has been announced yet. We hope for the best. I mean, it's timing wise it now is the perfect time for it you know it's a feel good I dare I say it it makes you feel patriotic no I, know, I know what you mean it's yeah. a, it was a wonderful piece to be a part of this summer which you know we're all kind of on a crazy um roller coaster ride in mm -hmm. in this country right now across the world really and it putting was it mildly. <laughs> putting it mildly <laughs> No, but yeah, you know, I'm playing it very. Um, yeah, you know, no, it's yeah. very safe. I, yeah. Um, but uh, and to be a part of the show that like it, it brought hope to us and it mm -hmm. made us feel patriotic and and uniquely American and you know it's at its heart it's a love story and it's a love story between two people but it also well you kind of wind up falling in love with the country again mm -hmm. and being reminded of what you know, even one person, two people, a group of people with the best of intentions and how that can spread and create something really magnificent, yeah. which is something I think we all need to be reminded of right now. So it's a wonderful piece. What a cool team. I mean, Tina Landau, Nell Benjamin, Tom Kitt. I, I was going to say all stars. <laughs> I mean, just all stars of this Ridiculous, yeah. you know. So to work with them was really, really terrific. And I can't wait to see where it goes next and, yeah. and to be in the room with all those incredible people again. But it's it's a great piece. I, right. hope, I hope you get to see it I time, would love to. It's great. And as someone who has been a part of such incredible shows, has worked with the people at the top of their game, the best in this yeah. industry. What do you look for when you're when you're trying to find something else to work on, a new project to be a part of? Like what are the what are the first major goalposts for you? What an awesome question. I mean, honestly, the first question is do I connect with the material? You know, is this something that speaks to me that I think will speak to other people? Mm -hmm. Is it well done? You know, I, I get offered a lot of really great or, or I get talked to about a really, a really great, ambitious new works. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're great and they're ready to be developed. And sometimes you kind of have to go, well, you know, let's talk when you come back with a few revisions. Because sure. it's hard, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. These you are years be a part of everything, long but process. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it takes a little while for things to develop. But really, do I connect with a piece? What does it have to say? Um, do I like it? Mm -hmm. Would I enjoy singing it or being a part of the story? you know, eight shows a week or whatever it takes you to. Um, and then do I connect with the character? You know, is it somebody I want to play? And that doesn't always mean they're a good person. Sure, or a, You right. know, but do you connect? Because sometimes something can be really terrifically written and it can be brought to you with the best of intentions and you go, I just don't, I don't connect to this. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes you get brought something that, is what you absolutely connect to, but is a complete challenge. Like that's my favorite. Right. When where, somebody where sends me something, oh my terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of like a little Grisabella. You get it and you go, <laughs> right. Oh, oh dear God, no. <laughs> right, right. And then you look at it again and go, Oh wait, I can do this. That's mm -hmm. a really cool feeling. So that's my favorite thing to find. I bet. Is there something from earlier in your career that now you'd like to revisit again? Oh, everything. Or? I yes. mean, <laughs> wouldn't we all like do a, a full, do over? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, everything, you know. Um, but I, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, you know, Drowsy Chaperone was my second Broadway show, and I was an offstage cover, essentially. I was like a partial swing. I sang offstage. I never went on for either principal role I covered for Janet or Drowsy. I would have loved to. Mm -hmm. I think I would have been fine. I, yeah, but looking at that right. roles now, th those roles now, ten over a decade later or about a decade later, and going who I am now and what I've learned. Oh, absolutely. Take a swing at would it. I love to take a swing <laughs> right. at those now? Right. You know. But there's so right. many like that that we yeah. you learn so much with every show you do with every class you teach with every reading you participate in it's always such a learning and growing experience mm -hmm. that the next one is better and you're a fuller person and you're a better performer and i would love to go back and and 
do almost everything again. Yeah. Maybe not everything. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put it out there. Well, yeah. and I know we want to take some questions from yeah. fans for a second, but I also know that you are a you are a teacher. You you instruct. I do. I what, teach and I coach what, whenever I can. Why is that important to you? Oh to my be God, able to... it's it's so fulfilling. You know, it's like we talked about where you want to bring what you can to people who are coming up in this, mm -hmm. and not just with uh, kids and with youth. I I get to do great workshops. I'm going to do a master class actually as soon as School of Rock closes out in Missouri with a bunch of really great kids and um, and that is thrilling and rewarding on its own but also working with actors who are just starting out in this business I do a lot of audition coaching and, mm -hmm. and I'm doing a Broadway con panel with a bunch oh, of fantastic. other terrific audition yes. coaches on Saturday the 12th yes I think that's the date yes. um, about coaching and why it's important to have a coach in your corner and I think it's just it's so rewarding for me to help um give a little bit of, of what I've learned mm -hmm. in my two decades of doing this. Um, but it's also just really, it, it informs me. You know, right. I learn from every student that I work with, no matter how young, no matter how new they are. Mm -hmm. And it's it's another thing that kind of feeds me and it energizes me. It's really important to me that I'm able to make time to do that. And sometimes it's hard, you know, I'm yeah. about to go out of town on a project and I don't know how much I'll actually be able to do, sure. but it's, but you know, you try and keep it up when you can because it's, yeah. it just feels like it's important. Well, they're very yeah. lucky. They're very oh, fortunate, thanks. of course. <laughs> so Eric, am I. <laughs> hey. What, would, what hey. would they like to know from Mamie? Yes, we've got some questions. Okay. Leia would like to know what is more exciting defying gravity in Wicked or flying to the heavy side layer in Cats oh mm, I think they're, that's a good question <laughs> they're both exciting for, for very different reasons um I mean, you know, there's nothing like that moment in Wicked. Everybody experiences it. And it's that moment right at the end of Defying Gravity and the audience just erupts and everybody's so excited. It's incredibly thrilling. Um, but it's such a journey in Cats to get to that moment in the heavy side layer mm -hmm. and to rise up and, and to have just finished such a cathartic, incredibly you know, emotionally taxing piece such sure. as memory yeah. and your reward for completing this incredible piece <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> finishing that moment is to be able to be welcome to this new world figuratively and also to go ride on a tire <laughs> <laughs> at the base, which was level, also yes. kind of terrifying. Yeah. So I think, you know, cats for me will take the cake, but I think we can all agree that, that divine gravity is its own kind of thrill. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you were also uh, speaking on how you teach and you coach. Yeah. Uh, what is the most memorable class that you've taken? Uh, Alexandra would like to know. Oh, gosh. I wasn't prepared for that question. I'd really have to think about it. I mean, you know, when I talk about classes and teaching and it, really starting out in this business, you know, you asked me about what teachers maybe mm -hmm. I had experienced. Probably the most memorable is I remember my first theater teacher when I was in eighth grade. I had... Um, found a spot in a performing arts school, a mm -hmm. middle school for the performing arts, but I had been accepted so late that I didn't get to request classes. So they just kind of threw me in some classes and I wanted to sing. I had only ever really known singing and music and I was thrown into an intro to acting or intro to theater class. Mm. And all of a sudden we were doing exercises in this class, you know, mirror exercises and, and talking about creating a story and, and what theater was and, this little thing in my head clicked and I was like, oh, oh, this is what I do. It was something, there was some muscle that I had exercised since I was a toddler mm -hmm. that turned out to be creating a character and, and finding a story and acting. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time, I'll never forget the room that I was in, you know? It's one of those moments where yeah. you go, oh, oh, this is what I do. And I was 12, I think. Sure, yeah. So that, I think, will always be the most memorable class. The room where it happens. The room where <laughs> and, it happens. And classes, it really was. classes never go away for performers, no. which is something that I, you know, like, there isn't a point where you you take your last class and never. now you're just prepared. Yeah. Like, pe people take classes their entire performance. And I'm lives. always so thrilled to meet teachers. And a lot of times now, as a Broadway performer, a lot of times those are your peers. Sure, You'll yeah. You'll work mm -hmm. with somebody absolutely terrific and go, oh my goodness, you have something incredible to offer me. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Let's Let's make it happen and right. you learn from each other and that's that's a really cool thing yeah. as a, as an as an adult as a grown up Absolutely, professional yeah. in this business Keep to it go growing, like yeah. I can learn from you. So this can be the last <laughs> one. It's kind of funny. It's just one word. Um, since you are an Andrew Lloyd Webber of veteran of uh, many shows of his, George just has one word to say and that's Evita? Question mark. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what's so funny is people ask a lot, like, what's your dream role? What's what's your role that you haven't played? And I'm like, you know, I really, I love doing original pieces. I love Absolutely. creating a character from scratch. So my dream role probably has not yet been written mm -hmm. or I've not yet been able to perform it. But... Um, but absolutely, if there's one in the musical theater canon that we all love, I yeah. would kill to play. I mean, I'd what kill an to hear your voice sing, sing of it. <laughs> what an incredible it's, sing! Yeah, like I yeah, would absolutely. love, I would love to just sing that sometime mm -hmm. in a concert setting. Please, like, I would love come that. here, just come. <laughs> sing. We'll set up a microphone. Yes. At lunch. We'll bring in a band. Yeah, It'll be great. No, I mean, I love that score, and that was. I didn't see a lot of theater growing up, you know, other than the, the children's theater that I said I saw. But I didn't have a lot of money growing up, and we weren't in that world. But I remember being a, a teenager in Kansas City, Missouri, and the national tour of. Vita coming through and hearing that music and seeing that story live, yeah. it was just so magnificent. You really yeah. don't forget those experiences. So, I mean, yeah, Evita, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. The, the the dust is out <laughs> in the universe now. Let's let's, let's go. Make let's it all happen. just take a trip. Let's go research. <laughs> right. We'll go visit Argentina. Absolutely. It'll be, yeah, it'll be a trip. A Broadway.com funded a trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mamie, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for it's so wonderful me. having you. Of course, make sure you go see Andrew Lloyd Webber's School of Rock at the Winter Garden Theater here on Broadway. You have until January 20th to do so. You will love it. It's such an experience. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Again, you come back anytime. Of love course, to. Eric, why don't you take us out? Sure thing. And thank you guys for tuning in today. We're live at five on Facebook every single day. And if you like podcasts, we're also in a podcast form. So go to wherever you get your podcasts, type in hashtag live at five and slam that subscribe button. Tune in tomorrow when we talk to Clark Thorell of My Fair Lady. <laughs>